Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Ware of Stream English here and today I'm going to be telling you what juxtaposition is. So let's do this. The Google definition of juxtaposition is actually pretty spot on. They define it as the fact of two things being seen or placed close together with contrasting effect. So juxtaposition is basically a type of contrast. But we can think of contrast kind of in a similar way to that old saying about how like all thumbs are fingers but not all fingers are thumbs. All cases of juxtaposition are contrast but not all cases of contrast are juxtaposition. I like to think of it in terms of like proximity. So juxtaposition has to happen on a pretty small scale in order for the contrast to be like quite close together. Other forms of contrast might be many, many pages apart. You know, there might be a contrast of what a character was like in chapter 1 versus chapter 10. That's not going to be juxtaposition, but it is going to be contrast. You can also get much, much closer forms of contrast, like let's say oxymoron, where the contrast is literally words that are right next to each other. So there's no hard or fast rule here, but I like to think that juxtaposition occurs within the same sentence or within like a couple sentences of one another, um, possibly two um, paragraphs that follow on from one another, but I wouldn't perhaps go more than that. Any bigger than that, I would say contrast instead. To look at uh, juxtaposition in practice, we're going to look at two different examples. One pretty easy, obvious example, and the one that's a little bit more challenging. For the easy start, we're going to have a look at this poem, Two Scavengers in a Truck, Two Beautiful People in a Mercedes by Lawrence Berlinghetti, because essentially the entire poem is juxtaposition. So I'm going to read the poem, and as I do, I want you to ask yourself, what two things can you see being contrasted and how are they being contrasted? Here we go. At the stoplight waiting for the light, 9am downtown San Francisco, a bright yellow garbage truck with two garbage men in red plastic blazers standing on the back stoop, one on each side hanging on and looking down into an elegant open Mercedes with an elegant couple in it. The man in a hip three-piece linen suit with shoulder-length blonde hair and sunglassed. The young blonde woman so casually coiffed with short skirt and coloured stockings on the way to his architect's office. And the two scavengers up since 4am, grungy from their route, on the way home. The older of the two with grey iron hair and hunched back, looking down like some gargoyle Quasimodo and the younger of the two, also with sunglasses and long hair, about the same age as the Mercedes driver, and both scavengers gazing down as from a great distance at the cool couple, as if they were watching some odourless TV ad in which everything is always possible, and the very red light for an instant holding all four close together as if anything at all were possible between them across that small gulf in the high sea of this democracy. So, I'm going to give you a few more seconds just to think about it. What can we see being contrasted? And then in five, I'm going to tell you four, what's being contrasted? Three, I don't have any more sentences to say. Two, so I'm just going to say whatever. One. So, what is being juxtaposed in this poem? It is the two scavengers in a truck against the two beautiful people in a Mercedes they are being juxtaposed against one another. What's being juxtaposed about them? Their wealth. Um, and that is pretty obvious. We can see in lines like um, the reference to the Mercedes, which has connotations of high wealth, versus the garbage truck and then being garbage men, which is an occupation that has connotations of being like poor pay, low skill, dirty, unpleasant. Um, we have contrast in their appearance, so we've got the simile of like some gargoyle or Quasimodo for the scavengers in a truck versus our hip three-piece linen suit for our guy in a Mercedes. So the poet is clearly juxtaposing the different wealth between these two. Why is he doing that is the next important question we've got to ask ourselves and we get that sense in the last stanza um, with that metaphor, the small gulf, sorry, no, before that, as if anything at all were possible between them across that small gulf in the high sea of this democracy. So basically we can think of that uh, gulf, that gap 
being a metaphor for the gap between the wealthy and the poor in society and those societal divisions that are based on money, class, occupation, so on and so forth. So this poem is exploring uh, you know, how big those divides are by really obviously juxtaposing the different qualities of life for the two different sides. Easy peasy, right? This next example is a little bit more subtle and a little bit uh, harder to spot. We've got here an extract from the play Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Specifically, we're dealing with Act 5, Scene 5. Now, don't worry too much if you are not familiar with the uh, play. I'm going to explain the core things that you need to know, so that doesn't matter. I'm going to start, however, by reading what Macbeth says. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. This is one of my favourite uh, soliloquies from Macbeth possibly actually my absolute favourite because I think it is such a ridiculously dark but also scarily true description of life. Um, he does it of course through metaphor, so with life being a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more, a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing, all of that metaphor is about the meaning and importance of life. And if we think about what that metaphor is saying, so first of all, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage. So that's talking about the person who's alive and suggesting that they live their life as if they have importance, you know, they're like an actor. Um, it perhaps also suggests that nothing is truly real because they're just performing. A struts and frets has connotations of confidence and certainty, um, feeling like, you know, you're in control, you have power. All of that is then juxtaposed against and then is heard no more. The simplicity, the bluntness of that language, the fact that it just immediately conveys like you're gone, there's emptiness. So we've got this juxtaposition between a metaphor of the poor player indicating uh, life, control, activity, um, importance, immediately uh, contrasted, immediately juxtaposed with nothing, meaningless, empty. And he does that again in the last line, a life being a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. So that part where he says full of sound and fury, we can see how sound and fury again have those connotations of power, strength, emotion, um, activity and how that is all then juxtaposed against signifying nothing. And so what we've got here is a pattern of suggesting that human beings fill our lives with noise and activity to make us feel powerful and important, but ultimately our lives are meaningless. Dark, right? So that brings us to the end of this video on what is juxtaposition. Hopefully you can see, nice and easy, juxtaposition is about two different things being contrast in a text. And one of the key things we have to ask ourselves when we're trying to analyse juxtaposition is what is the writer saying by contrasting those two things? And why would they contrast those two things? Now, unfortunately, I can't give you the answer to either of those questions because it will be different depending on the text that you're looking at. But you'll get used to practicing with lots of different texts. Um, and if you're feeling really stuck, make sure you have a look at my other videos on uh, how to analyze and how to analyze specific techniques because they'll help you develop the skills that you need to be able to analyze juxtaposition. See you later.